Hey guys, so a few of you have asked me to do a video on how we can protect ourselves from uh, 5G radiation after the videos that I've done. And um, I've been having a few comments as well saying, Hannah, you need to know the difference between ionising and non-ionising radiation. And I was like, okay, cool. Let me find out. So in this video, I wanted to tackle two questions. What is 5G radiation? Like what frequency band is it on? Um, and ways that we can protect ourselves from it. So, the best place to start, oh actually I will say now that I'm still going to cite my references, but the way that I did it in the last video I found didn't really work very well, it kind of jumbled the video up a bit too much, me saying them actually in the video. So what I'm going to do is when there's when I hit a reference point, I'm going to say a number, and then if you go into the description box, I will cite all of my references um, in chronological order. So, and we'll see if that works any better, let me know if you think it works better um but i i don't want to be saying like names of um kind of articles and things in the body of the video because um it just jumbles it up a bit too much so we'll try it this way and see how it works so the best place to start is probably to address the question of what is the difference between ionizing and non-ionizing radiation so bearing in mind i am not a scientist i'm a lawyer but i wanted to simplify this information that i found into a way that anybody can kind of understand it because i think actually it's something that we should all know um because it's basically like penetrating our body on a daily basis so um and potentially affecting our health i mean probably likely let's have a look so there are two forms of radiation you have um ionizing and non-ionizing one is deemed harmful and one isn't so we've got slower forms of radiation don't penetrate as deeply into the body and these are non-ionizing these are things such as sunlight um, sound and heat and if you look at them on the electromagnetic spectrum the waves tend to be they look slower the, 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 the peaks are more spaced out they're further apart um, and they're more, they're more shallow waves um, and then you have faster moving waves along further along the electromagnetic spectrum um, and these are things like gamma rays and MRI, MRI scans. And if you look at them on the spectrum, the peaks are a lot higher, the waves are a lot closer together and they look like they're moving a lot faster. Um, so these are ionising radiations. Um, and this is reference point one. If you go to the description box, you will find where I got that information from. Um, so when we're reading articles online about 5G, the most common theme you're going to find is that radio frequency radiation is what they're using and it's a non-ionizing form of electromagnetic radiation and so there's no way it can be harmful to us the 5g radiation is a high frequency form of microwave radiation and if you imagine it's on the electromagnetic set electromagnetic spectrum you've got um i think it's radio waves um, and then a bit faster is microwaves and then a bit faster is so infrared and then you've got visible light and then ultraviolet x-ray gamma ray i think that's the order that it goes in and as you progress through each of these the waves get faster and faster and closer together <coughs> so we move from non-ionizing into ionizing radiation so the higher the frequency the more dangerous they are so um if you imagine a microwave cooks food using a 2.45 gigahertz sorry excuse me i'm going to pop up on my screen um 2.45 gigahertz to cook your food and then the 4G um, network uses frequencies below six gigahertz. Now the 5G frequency range is gonna be, or is from between 24 gigahertz to over 100 gigahertz. So, I mean, that's a massive increase in the um, frequency range, the frequency bands. And actually it's been categorized just below a weapon. So I don't know if you know, like protests and things, they use these high frequency weapons to disperse crowds. Um, and the 5G frequency has been categorized just below a weapon. Now that is um, reference point two. There is a guy called Kevin Motus at the US Brain Tumor Association who says that within the frequency, no, the radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, which includes 5G microwave range, the higher the frequency, the more dangerous the radiation is to living organisms. That's reference three. Another guy that I found is a Dr. 
Lachinsky, who researches non-ionising radiation, who emphasises that there is not sufficient scientific research to show that low levels of exposure um, has no health effects in what he's termed as acute and chronic exposure. And I understand to mean short-term and long-term exposure. I'm, I think they essentially mean the same thing. Um, and that's reference point four. So the government and telecom industries are propagating this idea that low level EMF, which is electromagnetic frequency emissions from 5G devices will guarantee that human health will not be affected. But in 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified radiation emitted by mobile phones and cell towers as possible human carcinogens. And that is number five. So whether we can um agree on um 5g causing coronavirus or not we can definitely still look at protecting ourselves from the radiation because it's been classified as a potential carcinogen and let's face it no one wants to get cancer from their mobile phone um so the next thing i wanted to address hold on sorry don't tell me if you're drinking pepsi max i know we all have our vices okay um so without sounding new agey what came up as the top search for protecting ourselves against 5G radiation was crystals. Now, I mean, I've got a collection of crystals. I love crystals, don't get me wrong, but I wanted to try and approach this from um, an angle that I could back up with scientific research. And honestly, there hasn't been that much research done into crystals. I have found some. The top search that comes up when it comes to crystal healing and the benefits of a crystal in, in a healing perspective um, was actually a placebo effect. It was an experiment done in 2001 um, by French and his colleagues at Goldsmiths College at the University of London, where they basically um, did a study into the eth efficacy of crystal healing and they got 80 participants. Um, they gave half of them real crystals and half of them fake crystals and they asked them to meditate on them and kind of report back on what their experience was. Um, and basically the guy, the people with the fake crystals kind of reported the same kind of effects as the people with the real ones. So they concluded that that was a placebo effect. Another study, however, conducted in 2016, did find that crystals can absorb an indefinite amount of energy. So if you imagine that crystals are used in all sorts of things, they're, they're used in all kinds of technology, um, which I wasn't aware of before I did this research. Um, quartz especially um, is used in kind of watches and it's in your, it will be in your phone um, and things like that. So there was research led by a Jing Yu Zhang from the University of Southampton in England. This is reference point seven. <coughs> I don't know if I said actually that the guy before um, with the placebo effect experiment, that was reference point six. Um, but yeah, so this is reference point seven. And what they were able to demonstrate was the ability to store data indefinitely in a synthetic crystal they used an ultra fast and intense pulse laser which is effectively wavelengths of energy and concluded that the data could be stored for over a million years and works particularly well with high intensity waveforms so this would suggest then that it could be useful crystals could be useful in the absorption of other high intensity electromagnetic waves like ionizing and non-ionizing radiation the crystal that came up as the top search for protecting against 5G luckily has had some um, peer-reviewed studies done into the efficacy of um, absorbing EMF. And it's called Shungite. And the Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, Kansas State University and the US Naval Research Laboratory were able to demonstrate that Shungite can fully absorb electromagnetic radiation. That is reference point eight. Um, Shungite research was also presented at a scientific congress in Russia in 2016, um, where they discovered that Shungite, when it encounters EMF frequencies, a phenomenon known as resonance happens. It transforms EMF waves into waveforms that are more compatible with our biology. Um, it effectively shields you from harmful EMF frequencies from cell phones, computers, 5G, cell towers, TVs, etc. Um, and it was demonstrated that shungite impacts our biophotons. So when shungite is placed near or on us, the brain patterns actually change. 
um, and that is reference point nine. So I have a very dear friend who is actually fashioning handmade um, jewellery from shungite and copper wire and something to do with magnets. I don't have the full details at the moment, but I have um, asked her if she could make my son and me necklaces out of this crystal um, and I have seen her jewellery before and they are stunning pieces, they're all handmade and um, so when I have that I will let you guys know um, what that what it's like and let you see pictures and link you to her page if she's open to that and you can purchase them yourself but um, I hope you found this video useful, like I said all of my references will be cited in the description box so you can access any of this information yourself. Another link that I'm going to add as well is I found um, 180 um, letters from scientists and doctors that have been written to governments around the world to halt the rollout of 5G because of peer-reviewed studies into the health effects of um, 3G, 4G and 5G radiation. So um, I will link that as well for you to have a look at and hopefully we can put some more pressure on the government to, to do some more research into the health effects of 5G because it's really not very good. But yeah, namaste.